whispers, if you can please uh, end your conversations. If you have a cell phone, would you please mute your cell phone or silence it? For those joining us on the Zoom, if you would please keep yourself muted unless you are called upon to speak. All right, council members, y'all ready? The City of Glendale Common Council is now in session. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Kennedy. Here. Alderwoman Vukovic. Here. Alderman Doherty. Here. Alderman Gellhard. Here. Alderman Bailey. Here. Alderman Schmalzling. Here. Alderwoman Shaw. Here. Thank you. Public comment. Glendale residents, business owners, and property owners are invited to speak to the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda, but are within the city's ability to regulate or control. Is there anyone wishing to speak to a non-agenda item? Microphone is not on, sorry. No, oh, perfect. Okay, 7530 North Applewood Lane. Um, as you heard in the listening session, um, uh, Nicolay is trying to make arrangements to put a, a, a hockey rink in over at Meslowski Park. And uh, they've had a couple meetings where it's been discussed and some plans have been put forward. And they talk about being in negotiating a memorandum of understanding with the city about it, but I haven't heard anything from here. So I was wondering, does anybody know what's going on? It has not risen to our level yet. I do know the city administrator has had contacts with folks, but he hasn't placed it on an agenda because there's nothing for us to vote on yet. But I'll turn it over to Carl if you want to give an update on what you know. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor Kennedy. Um, yeah, Rob, the um, the uh, Milwaukee Winter Club is actually the one who's proposing to put it on Nicolay property. Um, it's mainly between the Milwaukee Winter Club and Nicolay High School for uh, the ice rink. Uh, the city of Glendale may be involved in it in some respects, but we are negotiating the memorandum of understanding right now. I think it falls outside of the scope of the intergovernment agreement that's in place already. So I just, I thought it would have to come before the council for a vote. That's all. Oh, it definitely will. It just hasn't risen to that level yet. All right. Thanks. By the way, the intergovernmental agreement we have, Nicolay has a long-term lease on the fields that are there. So the one is MSOE stadium that they built, and then there's a softball field and a grass practice field. So in, for all intents and purposes, those are Nicolay property as far, unless they need a, something from the city. There's, so there's certain prescribed uses they're allowed to put it to and sure. hockey rinks not on the list. So I, right. So they would bring that eventually to us for approval, but that's the, for them to work out. I know they have informed Carl. Carl t mentioned it to me once a couple weeks ago, but he said nothing to take to the council yet. The, it doesn't where Nicolay and the winter club don't even, don't even have it finalized yet. So, right. yep. Yeah. Alderman Schmelzling? I remember Bayshore, they built their yard to be able to support an ice rink. So I've never heard anything else develop there. Has anybody else just out of curiosity since we're on the topic? Haven't heard anything, no. Okay. All right. Anything else in public comment on a non agenda item? So we do have a couple of public hearings tonight. Nothing to do with the public hearing, nothing to do with the listening session, anything that's a non agenda item. Anyone on the Zoom want to speak to a non-agenda item? If so, you can unmute, state your name and address. All right. Uh, we do have two public hearings that were noticed for this evening. The first public hearing uh, is regarding a map amendment to change an R7 residence district to an R7A residence district, which would permit uh, duplexes or two residences on the same property. Um, this is for 902 West Eula Court in the R7 Residence District. Um, to be changing that particular property. There are several others on that street that are R7As, as well as several other streets uh, adjacent to Eula Court that are R7As. So uh, this was already had a public hearing at the uh, Plan Commission, and it's now back to the Common Council for us to hold our public hearing. So I will now open the public hearing on the uh, rezoning of 902 West Eula Court from an R7 residence district to an R7A residence district. Is there anyone wishing to speak 
I'll start with the chamber first, and then I'll go to the folks that are online. So if you're online, just hang tight. We'll come back to you. I see two hands up. So ma'am, if you would like to come up um, first, and um, you'll have to speak directly into the microphone. If you back away from it a little bit, it stops picking you up. So you need to stay close to it and state your name and address first, please. Uh, my name is Helen Olinsky. I own... 903 and 829 and also 900 on West Glendale. This has been property in my family for over a hundred years. Um, I grew up there and if people in the neighborhood remember what happened when Mar when Bronco put in that townhouse down the street, it just caused so much trouble. We had drugs. We had uh, fights. We had a lot, just a lot of trouble with that townhouse. And finally, it got ripped apart by the tenants and completely gutted and had to be rebuilt. And uh, we don't have drugs now, but you start putting in more of these type of buildings, it just brings more and more trouble. It was a one Mrs. Burke and her husband owned that place for probably 80 years. And then he went to the Becks that owned it for maybe 10 years. That's all that's ever been there. And it was the Burks who built an extra addition to the farmhouse and uh, made it across the two properties so it could not be split. It's a beautiful property you start putting a huge building on it, like I say, it's gonna bring more, more trouble, more things going on. We have had 10, we have had owners actually sell their houses, several of them. And I, I know one person particularly very well because of the thing, it, it just blocked everybody's view from the street. I mean, these are river properties, long and thin for some reason, but you start stack, and this townhouse is put sideways, two feet off of the lot line from either side. You step out the front door, you're on the next guy's property or the back door. That's ridiculous. It's not even nice looking, it's horrible. And I guess that's all I got to say. I am def definitely against it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yep. Uh, my name is Craig Kurtz. I live at 1012 West Eula Court. Uh, I'm the owner of the property at 902. And uh, when I bought the property, I knew that it was a double wide lot. Every property on that street is a 40 foot, a typical Milwaukee 40 foot wide lot. That is when the people originally built on it, they bought two lots and built a house across both of them. Uh, so that's an 80 foot wide lot. Uh, there are, I live, uh, I understand Helen's comments about uh, one of the properties on the street, but I would submit that that's a condition of the owner uh, and the type of tenants that he may have chose to, to rent to. I live in a two family building at the end of Eula Court and, I, uh, and I'm sure that Helen would say there's never been any problems from that building that has two tenants. Uh, there are seven properties on that street uh, on, the, uh, on Eula Court that have two homes, either a two family home or two actual single family residences already on that street. Uh, so putting two families on and those are on 40 foot wide lots and mine's an 80 foot wide lot so it's already twice as wide so my intention I know that there was a lot of uh, rumor and uh, conjecture uh, over the last couple of weeks leading to this meeting about what the intention or the plans were to do with that lot there was talk about uh, that we were going to build a six family, three story, you know, monstrosity there that the zoning doesn't even allow that. Uh, if it's zoned from R7 uh, to R7A, the only thing that it would allow me to do would be to build a two family attached dwelling, a side by side townhouse or uh, two single family uh, detached homes there. And my full intention is to build two single family homes that would be conforming. I live on that street. 
I, I, I bought the property. I, I, I own three properties on that street, 1012 and 1014, 902, and I bought 807, which was a house that was in very bad disrepair. And I rehabbed that entire house and sold it to a very nice couple that now lives there. Uh, it beautified the lot. Uh, it didn't do anything to detract from the, the neighborhood. Uh, the home that was on the lot at 902 was a, was a dangerous uh, uh, disaster. It had a blue tarp over the roof for years. Uh, the house was in, in such bad repair that it wasn't even inhabitable. It should have been condemned. And when I bought it, my intention was to try to rehab it, but it was in such bad shape that it couldn't even be rehabbed. The foundation was bad and it just had to be torn down. So it's been sitting vacant for now almost two years. Uh, I have a number of people who are builders who are interested in it, but uh, it doesn't make sense to build one huge house on that 80 foot lot when every other house on the on the street is a is a modest size home on a 40 foot lot. So if I if I'm able to build two single family homes there that would be conforming with the rest of the neighborhood. And that's my intention. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Bob Wagner, um, I live in uh, Heron Pond in Mequon, but my daughter lives immediately next to this house or this property. And she is handicapped, her son is handicapped. We bought it 14 years ago, knowing that it was a wonderful area. My attitude has changed since I just heard the comments. If they are single family homes, I wouldn't have a big objection. My daughter would have to live with that. If it's anything more than that, I really strongly object. I don't want to see the neighborhood uh, any less than it is now. As I said, she's lived there for 14 years and we thought it's an ideal spot for them and I don't want to see it destroyed. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in the public hearing? Yes, sir. Come on. Hello, my name is Dan Namer. Uh, I, I bought a property, it's 910 West Eula Court. I bought it approximately nine or 10 years ago. And one of the reasons I bought it was it was a quiet neighborhood, dead end street. I need to lean a little forward to the- I understand that the place. homeowner's uh, uh, concept that he would like to do is, is uh, two single family homes on the lot. Um, and uh, I understand, however, though, he did mention he's thinking of selling to some other parties and he could certainly sell the property. And I don't see the hardship of, uh, if he knew it was two lots made into one when he purchased it, I, I don't see why he thought they could put two buildings on the property. Also, I'm not familiar with the entire R7A zoning, but I, I do understand that maybe not the present owner, but if you were to sell to someone else, that it would give the feasibility of a up to 40 foot high building, which is four stories high, uh, if I understand R7A correctly. Uh, I, that's not correct. How tall can the building be? Uh, standard uh, standard home. So it could be a duplex home, you know, sort of a two story home that has two sides to it, or it could be two single family homes, mm -hmm. but it can't exceed the the typical single family home or duplex um, allowable um, dimensions in the city. So, okay. well, regardless, I mean, there's there's basically two parties or three parties interested here. Maybe the neighbors, if they such as me, if we have a voice, uh, the council, and the requester uh, of the zoning change. I I guess I don't understand why there is a hardship for anyone other than the person who has the lot, and I, it's not like he can't build on it. Not like he bought a building that. Uh, a lot that he thought was buildable is now not buildable. I just don't understand where is the hardship to uh, to anyone other than the current owner. And he, I guess he could have researched the zoning and maybe checked on, on the feasibility of changing the zoning before he purchased it. That would have been, I think, the wisest maneuver. I understand that there was another meeting previous to the last meeting where there was a quest, request to split it again into two 40-foot lots as it was originally. 
had that been, and I, I understand that that was declined by the council, had that been agreed upon by the council, there would still be the, the tax base of two homes rather than one. And it would, would affect the you know, parties in, such, in, in that way. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned as a neighbor, I would vote, uh, I guess, against it just because I, I don't see the hardship uh, for anyone other than one party here. And it's not like it's a hardship where he can't build a house or can't resell a lot to somebody who would be willing to work within the restraints of the R7 zoning. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. You're welcome. A question for staff. Was there a request to divide this into two lots? So I guess I phrase that as there was no formal request to divide in two lots. When we talked to the property owner, uh, he came in and discussed what he would like to do. Um, and the minimum lot width in Glendale, the smallest lot you can have is 60 feet. So with him having um, 80 feet, you can't really split 80 into 260. So the best option, it was um, evaluating the ordinance and going with the R7, which would still allow for two houses. It keep that pattern of, you know, 40, 40, 40, um, but it would be on two lots rather than, um, or it'd be on one lot rather than on two. So the 40 foot wide lots on that street currently, they predate the ordinance that says they have to be 60. Correct. We have a paragraph in our ordinance that states any uh, lots lying south of Silver Spring um, are 60 feet, cannot be less than 60 feet in width. And then we have another paragraph that talks about Silver Spring north to, a, a, a it's kind of a gerrymandered kind of line, but it's generally Bender Road. And then so Glendale, if you think from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, basically as you go from south to north, the minimum lot width actually grows from 60 to 75 to 100. And okay. it's just a flat, it's okay. just blanketed. But there wasn't a request that the council turned down. That No, there was not a okay. request that council turned okay. down. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Alderman Doherty? What's the logic in not having it be like the rest of the neighborhood? Would the 60 feet come from? What's the, there's a fire reason or is there, well, I'm just curious why we wouldn't have something be in a neighborhood be the same. So um, I, I guess um, uh, uh, council or uh, uh, planning commission, uh, planning commissioner Seligman probably would be able to answer this really um, concisely, but I think the, the as an quick, urban historian, the quick answer here is um, when zoning was put in place um, throughout the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of model ordinances were done. And what happened was communities adopted a model ordinance as if they were undeveloped and everything was going to be developed to this model, but it did not take into account um, existing conditions. So you'll see this in a small little town. Um, you'll see this um, throughout Milwaukee County. And, um, you know, I, I remember maybe 20 years ago, there was a analysis by the planners in Wauwatosa that basically most of the Eastern part of Wauwatosa was basically non-conforming because they adopted these model ordinances that didn't really, um, consider context. I would say about 20 years ago, communities started to adopt new ordinances that were con more context sensitive. So, um, there'd be like language that would say, you know, if you're going to have a lot, it needs to be consistent with the average on that particular block. So you could have um, a 40 foot lot. We've discussed updating our zoning code. We just haven't gotten to that point yet. So, you know, if we fast forward, maybe in uh, three or four years, maybe we'll have a, you know, or maybe sooner we'll have a, a new code that would be more content sensitive. But at this point we have what we have that's probably goes back at least three or more decades. Oh. And there'd be a variance? So a variance, you have to prove a hardship and a hardship can't be monetary. So in an analyzing this with um, the applicant, uh, rezoning to the R7 made more sense because um, obviously um, by splitting it, he gets two lots and there's more you know, value in two lots, that sort of thing. So um, basically we explained two options. This one seemed... Um, sort of a better option. There are currently, um, and I wish I could share my map with you, but there is actually uh, one, two, about four or five lots to the west of the subject lot. There is a parcel already zoned R7A. 
Um, on the south side of Eula Court, there are two par one parcel also zoned R7A, and then all of the lots on Glendale Avenue that face Glendale Avenue to the uh, both facing south and north on Glendale Avenue, um, they are also R7A. So the thought was in this particular neighborhood, um, th there's already a handful of R7A, so it sort of made some sense to go down that particular direction. John, are there a number of um, 40 foot white house or lots with multiple structures on them as well too that are zoned R7? In the R7, there is um, quite a few properties that have two units on them. They would be non-conforming um, uses on the in the R7. So a lot of those um, uh, either duplexes or you know two freestanding um, uh, units on those lots are non-conforming. So um, one's at the street and one's more toward the river. Correct. Correct. And so uh, through another paragraph in the ordinance, if those um, if one of those um, buildings were to be vacant for more than 12 months, the use would actually expire and it could not be rented out again, technically. Um, but they, they typically get rented out fairly quickly. I don't think any of them stay vacant very long. So, um, they've not become obsolete from that perspective. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the commission? Yeah. Alderman Shaw. Just following up with what Alderman Doherty was saying about splitting the lots and everything, because I know do know that districts one and six have the smallest lot sizes within the city limits. And obviously, majority of the lot sizes, I at least in my area, for sure, are 40 foot front frontage. So I started here in Glendale 18 months ago when I started. That was one of the very first things I noticed was, wow, um, the whole lower part of Glendale is basically non-conforming. I was a little shocked. I expected to open up the ordinance and see, you know, 40, 45, something, 42. But instead, the paragraph says the 60. So, And my gut says at that point in time, the 60 foot must have came in later because with having that much, because we're so close to Milwaukee, to where I'm, we have a lot of 40 foot frontage. And that's, I'm, I'm having a hard time. If I go, if I, because of my, my if I, area. Yeah. If I go back in time of, of documents that I can go back to, um, I can't pinpoint a date. I would guess these paragraphs date from, um, the fifties or sixties, probably from the first or second zoning code adopted by the city. I'm going to say it's later in the sixties because our hot homes and my subdivision are all built around the fifties. And with respect to that, again, it's been there. And I just, unfortunately, I haven't been around that long, but I know when we went around where um, it was lobbied by by um, individuals not to have um, home inspections when you sell property. That's when a lot of this information came out as well. So it's been at least 10 years that I was talked about, you know, eight, 10 years where the, the, where you don't have to have inspections anymore at the time of sale. And so ideally, that's where a lot of that ideally, came. Ideally, we'd have a paragraph that um, generally talked about context sensitive and that lots should be, you know, an average of what's on that particular block or something to that effect um, that would deal with uh, lots that are 40 or if you're in a neighborhood that has 60 and you actually have, you know, another lot or something. I mean, that would give more flexibility, um, but I don't have that tool to offer anyone. Any other clarification questions around this particular property? We can talk more at length in a future council meeting about uh, lot sizes and the rest of the of the city, but um, we do need to get back to the public hearing and this particular property at hand. So um, Alderman Schmelzing and then Alderman Gelhard. Yeah, real, real quick, just so I have right perspective. If this moves ahead, the rezoning before there would be a new home place there would go through the um, planning and architecture committee and there'd be an opportunity to voice any concerns about what's being built at that point too. Yeah, so um, all structures and site plans do go for the uh, through the planning and architectural review commission. So um, whether that's a single family or a duplex or an industrial building, they all would go um, to staff at that um, level, so. If we change the, the zoning from R7 to R7A, does that mean that this individual will be able to put two homes on, on the property? Is that what this That's is it. all about? It? Correct. And the, the, the R7A refers to the R7 with regard to height, setback, and those types of things. So um, in terms of setbacks and height, whether it's two or one, they're the same set of rules. Any other questions from... All right, let's go back to the public hearing. Is there anyone else in the chambers wishing to speak? 
Well, others have spoken, so we'll come back to you. If, like, give you a second shot in just a minute. Anyone else wishing to speak who hasn't spoken? Okay, is there anyone on the Zoom that wishes to speak in the public hearing? If so, you may unmute and state your name and address. All right, seeing none, call you back up one more time. All right. Uh, yeah, just to be clear, uh, I did never uh, petition to have the uh, zoning change or, or the uh, ability to, to split the two lots. Uh, but if that were a possibility through a variance or any other vehicle, that would be my preference. It would be easier for us to manage that uh, if we were able to just split it in two lots and build two conforming homes on a street that are all 40 foot lots. So if that's possible, I'd be willing to you know take more time to address that and see if we could come up with something for that. That would be my preference. Okay. That, that, at this point, that would be a several month process. We'd have to introduce a new ordinance that would permit lots of 40 foot widths. Yeah. That then has to go through a series of public hearings, has to go to the plan commission and come back. Once that's done, then you could come before us with a proposal for a certified survey map that splits the property into two 40 foot lots. But yeah. All right, any other folks wishing to speak in the public hearing? All right, second call, anyone wishing to speak? Third and final call for testimony on the rezoning of 902 West Eula Court. All right, can I get a motion from a member of the council to close the public hearing, please? So moved. moved by Alderwoman Shaw, second by Alderman Doherty. All those in favor of closing the public hearing on the rezoning of 902 West Eula Court from an R7 to an R7A, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. So we have before us a request from a resident um, who owns 902 West Eula Court to rezone from an R7 residence district to an R7A residence district. This has been to the Plan Commission. Uh, the Plan Commission did refer it back to the Common Council for uh, recommending approval. Uh, we've held po two public hearings at the Plan Commission as well as at the Common Council. So tonight uh, would be a motion uh, to approve the rezoning, or um, if there was not a motion to approve the rezoning, then it would be a motion to, I guess, postpone indefinitely. So um, would there be a motion to approve the rezoning? Move by Alderman Vukovic. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Alderman Gelhard. Uh, we're now in a period of debate and discussion on rezoning the property. Alderman Doherty. It sounds like we've had this wrong for a long time. I guess, why don't we try to fix it? Why don't we just, I mean, if it's two months, I don't know if that's going to cause the end of the world. But I guess if we've had this issue where you're not trying to keep a neighborhood as a neighborhood, I think that's a problem. I'd rather see it look like the rest of the neighborhood. If I live there, that's what I would, that's what I would want. I'd like to see us not do this and figure out how to get our ordinance in line with what's going on in reality. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vukovic. Um, this doesn't change the same as other houses there. I mean, I no one's called me and no one's told me anything. I'm just looking at what the district looks like. I campaign there. I know what it looks like. There are houses back to back like that all up and down this court. So I don't I'm I'm trying to find out what the real reason is. It it doesn't change the look of it, it doesn't change the feel of it. Um, it brings a newer house in there, but I don't, and I haven't heard from any of my constituents. So I'm just saying it, they usually call and trust me, if something was really major, they would call. Um, I don't see, um, uh, I take a little offense to the argument of renters because out of all these council members, I am a renter. And I, I, I really um, respect people who maintain houses. I'm a, a decent tenant. I, you know, I serve Cindy City of Glendale in, as an alderman in years for school board. So all winters aren't bad. And it depends on the landlord who picks these renters. But overall, I think there is not a, um, I don't see a big hoopla from my constituents who do call me if they had an issue with this really severely, but it's just like other houses that are there. 
So I don't see what the big deal is. That's Thank just you. my opinion. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Schmelzing, go ahead. I'm um, just thinking about the variance approach. Like I see that going further down the road away from getting to something that is aligned with everything else, because then you'd have essentially a property that would have two houses of non-conforming use. So given this gets us to the end goal of having really what was originally planned to be there with the two property or with the two homes on the one stretch, um, I don't see an issue with R7A. And then if we ever want to go ahead and clean up the ordinances and, and make it more, what was the word, contextual to, to what really is there today, then we can always still do that. And then it'll just, maybe it can be split then. Um, so I think that would be the long game if, if we wanted to get there. And then we can go through this whole process again if we wanted to go to like a, just a regular R7 again. But, but overall, I don't want to get stand in the way of progress. I think we should be trying to encourage um, what our uh, our homeowners and landowners want. So thank you. I just add, having been a part of the hearing at the public at the um, Planning and Architectural Review Commission, um, my feeling on this is as you go down that street, you have a whole bunch of 40 foot wide lots where you have a home at the street and the driveway going back to the home that's behind it that's back at the river. And you have 40 foot wide lots with two homes on them. This is an 80 foot wide lot, but it would have two single family homes. So in my opinion, you know, given the, given what's there, single lots with two homes on them, two residences on them, this really is conforming to that, but it actually has more yard space than probably any of the other homes would have on that area because they're 40 foot wide lots with two homes on the lot. So I, I, I do support the rezoning. I, I, I think it is conforming to the rest of, of the neighborhood. Although the folks that live in these two homes are going to have more yard, more yard space than most of their neighbors are actually going to have because of the 40, because of the 80 foot wide lot. So any other comments from members of the common council? All right. Um, we'll go then call for a vote. All those in favor of approving the rezoning, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Okay. Can I get a show of hands on the eyes? Four and a show of hands on the nose, please. Two. Okay. By a vote of four to two, the rezoning is approved. All right. The next item is also a public hearing. This is for a request to rezone 5055 North Lydell Avenue. This is the former um, Sunbeam Oster plant headquarters. Um, it's now currently owned by um, Phoenix JCR Glendale Industrial Investors. They want to rezone from a B1A1 local business district to a PD plan development district. Uh, it has already been approved to be a corporate headquarters. That was actually done at the plan commission a couple of months ago. Um, and now I believe in, in order to do significant development work, they actually want to rezone from the B1A1 local business district to a PD plan development district because there are a number of things they want to do on the property that includes some demolition and reconstruction. And so a PD would be better suited to allow that to happen. There was a public hearing at the Planning and Architecture Review Commission. Uh, I don't believe there was any testimony at this particular item. And the, the PARC did refer it back to the Common Council for approval. So I will now open the public hearing on the rezoning of 5055 North Lydell. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this particular rezoning? And we'll start in the Common Council chambers first. Is there anyone here wishing to speak in this public hearing? I'm not seeing anyone wishing to be recognized. Is there anyone who is joining us on the Zoom that would like to speak in the public hearing for the rezoning of 5055 North Lydell. If so, you may unmute and state your name and address, please. Not seeing anyone. Second call. Anyone wishing to speak in the public hearing? Third and final call on the rezoning of 5055 North Lydell. Anyone wishing to speak in the public hearing? I do. Oh, okay. Go ahead. If you'd state your name and address, please. I'm Christine Whitworth, 5112 North Lydell. Um, and I guess I don't know the plans attached to the rezoning information. Is that going to be another agenda item or does that relate to this one? I'll turn it over to Mr. Fellows to address your question. 
He's our director of city development. So. so the packet for the public hearing and the packet for the action item are both the same packets. Um, just to, to uh, describe it. So the development plan, uh, with a plan development district, there's basically three steps. The first step is a rezoning with a general approval of a general development plan. So those plans are um, maybe like 40% plans. They, they may, for instance, with the landscaping plan indicate, you know, there's going to be some trees and buffers. Um, the next step is the applicant will submit for a specific development plan. That's where the architectural drawings, the landscaping, other things are going to be more refined and more specific. Um, I have not received that application yet, but I would expect that probably in the next 30 days um, as their uh, team is working on that application. And then the third part of it is a development agreement that would come to city council for approval. Typically that comes with a specific development plan or shortly thereafter. Um, so that's sort of a quick background of the process, but uh, the plans that are attached to both items C and D should be the same and um, represent uh, the intent of the, the layout. Thank you. Christine, did you have any further questions or did you want to offer any testimony? I do. Um, I just feel like the that lot right now with the building and then an enormous amount of parking behind it, I didn't quite understand why they wanted to put the parking lot in front of the building now. Um, I think it changes the way the whole building looks. Neither building on to the south of it has the parking lot in front. Um, and I think it's unfair to the homeowners across the street to suddenly have the parking lot in the front when in the past, the entrance to the building and all the parking has been in the back. So uh, I can answer part of this. So the the actual entrance to the old Sunbeam Oster was on um, Lydell Avenue. That was the main entrance. I believe the proposal here is to put a small parking area for visitors in the front on Lydell, but the remainder of the parking for anybody else is going to be in the back for anybody who's working there. It's only a small visitor lot. I think it's like 12 spaces or something like that. It'd be a little bit more in the teens. Maybe. Yeah, it was somewhere in the teens. It was, it was not a huge parking lot. It's just visitor parking in the front side. There is a, I... a large buffer with um, stormwater controls and landscaping. Yeah. So go ahead, Christine. Oh, I was gonna say, I still think it just changes the whole look and then it's unfair to the residents to suddenly have to be looking at that parking lot where right now um, the parking is all behind the building. Thank you. Yeah, Alderman Doherty, go ahead. Well, I would disagree, Brian, in the sense I worked in that building. So when it was Sunbeam Oster, most people came in from the back and everyone came from Lydell's side just because the way the roads are, Port Washington brought more traffic. So the, the parking, in fact, that was on the north side was mainly visitor parking then. So I, I, I'm sympathetic to say it changes the way that the street, it's a long building, but uh, it, it is uniform across that. And I, I, I'm sympathetic to what uh, Christine's saying. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else, any other comments? Any, uh, Christine, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I also wish there was more consideration for, um, like the whole property buffers the Old Leaf Trail. It's a huge biking area. Um, I think it's just, again, frustrating to put the parking lot right in front. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the Zoom wishing to speak? Anyone else in the Common Council Chambers? Uh, Alderman Shaw, go ahead. I would just like to make a comment because I know when all the um, auto dealers were being built along Green Bay Avenue, I know it's not mandatory, but I know at that time the administration did ask that the um, auto, uh, auto dealers try to put majority of their parking in the back. Just again, to sympathize with Christine, it's it's just aesthetically more pleasing to at least have the cars behind the building or off to the side as opposed to right there in front. So I am very sympathetic because that's what we requested of all the auto dealers. Thank you. Um, is there someone joining us on the Zoom, uh, Mr. Fellows, who's from this project? Uh, yes, both John and uh, Ian. Okay. Wondering if either John or Ian can answer a question for me. Um, this property, the the small parking lot that would be built on Lydell, that parking lot is only for visitors who would be coming in and out of the building during the daytime. That's not for staff and everybody else working there, that, like almost all of the other parking primarily is going to be behind the building and staff would enter from the back side of the building, I'm assuming. Is there anything that would prevent customers from entering the back side of the building or visitors during the day? 
Uh, this is John from from Phoenix. John Bray from Phoenix. So as we as we start to kind of parse this this lot, uh, we're going to be separating the building basically in half. So there's going to be two buildings on the structure, and our civil plan is going to drive more landscaping buffers and islands in the existing parking lot as we resurface and take care of kind of the the disarray it's been over the years. So that kind of limits the amount of parking on the northwest side. But for the east side, like Mr. Fellows had uh, had mentioned, we will be doing landscaping and potentially a buffer fence um, to mitigate <clears throat> any of those visual aspects from the east side. And that would be strictly pretty much for visitors and staging of some sort. We don't really know the final direction of the tenant that's going to be in there because we have several tenants looking at this and I can't disclose those avenues quite yet but that will strictly be kind of a, a more of a, a temporary or visitor or staging side for that building. And all the cars will be faced uh, away from the streets to limit uh, any headlights transfer over as well. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah. If I may, Mayor, there was a number of conditions within the staff report that address a number of topics from uh, utilities to landscaping and one of the items that staff did put as a, a condition of the general development plan was for the applicant to develop a, a more robust uh, landscaping plan along Lydell to provide screening of the um, the parking area, as well as to um, provide more information about how the bioswales will be um, landscaped. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in the public hearing? There is somebody over here, Mr. Fellows. You could please state your name and address, please. Ken and Grass, I live in Whitefish Bay. Um, it's more of a clarification question. When I looked at the plans, it looked like there were two almost bays, like garage bays. And I'm trying, I'm trying to understand what that is. Well, there are currently garage bays. If you go around to the back oh. side of the building, there are uh, the southernmost part of the building. They're large garage bays. That's how they used to get in and out of the, the part of the plant. Okay, so that's, are they staying like that? Is that the part of the plan? I guess I haven't, I don't recall seeing those. Um, that, that may be a question for Mr. Pere or Mr. Wolkowitz. Yeah, I can I can speak to that. <clears throat> so we have not finalized the interior spatial layout for the future tenant in the building. So that that plan that you had seen in the package is is uh, subject to change. So we have not finalized the plan for that side of the building, but we are uh, essentially raising the two story brick portion. So it'll pull the building back about uh, I want to say about a hundred feet from the road. Uh, but we we don't know one hundred percent what the internal spatial uh, configuration is going to be. So those garage doors may stay or they may go. We just, we don't have that answer yet. And I can't, I can't, uh, tell you that that's going to be the final layout and set until I understand, um, the functionality or who's going to be going into the building. And those are on the back side of the building, correct? Those are on the, the east side, the east corner. They're on Lydell? Yeah. In the oh, corner. Yeah. Okay. And I, I just don't remember them. I used to work there too. And I, I just don't remember seeing those. Currently, they don't face Lydell, though, but in the new plans, they did. Oh, okay. So currently, they don't face Lydell, but in the new plans, they do. I was invited by the owner maybe two months ago to take a tour of the property with him, and I did. And I remember being in, once I was inside, I had no idea which direction I was facing or whatever, but I did yep. see some, we went into like a warehouse area where there were these large garage door bays, and so... I didn't know what side of the building that was on. I just assumed it was the back side, but okay. I think that was my only concern. And I don't even live on Lightdale, but um, if those, because I don't remember seeing those. So uh, thank you for clarifying that those mm -hmm. do not face Lightdale now. If there is intention to move um, forward with having garages or bays or what have you, I don't, I don't think that's the most attractive look um, facing Lydell. That was my biggest concern with it. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else wishing to speak in the public hearing? Oh, 
All right. Can I get a motion then from a member of the council to close the public hearing, please? So moved. Second. Baldwin and Gelhard, second to Baldwin and Schmelzling. All those in favor of closing the public hearing on the rezoning okay. of 5055 North Lydell Avenue, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The public hearing is closed. Uh, before us is a recommendation from the Planning and Architecture Review Commission to uh, approve a rezoning of 5055 North Lydell Avenue from a B1A1 local business district to a PD plan development district. Um, and so a motion to that regard would be in order. Um, I would say, however, that any plans submitted, there has to be a specific um, implementation plan. So the designs are going to go before the Planning and Architecture Review Commission. And I believe as Mr. Fellows works with the, the owners here, um, you did get a number of public input as well as members of the council's input on um, some changes that we might want to see before that design, before those designs would come before the Planning and Architecture Review Commission. So if you could make sure to relay those to the owners if this is approved tonight. So um, is there a motion to approve the rezoning to a PD plan development district? So move. Move by Alderman Vukovic. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Bailey. Any further discussion from members of the council? Alderman Gellhart? Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious uh, from the comments that um, some type of buffer would be in order, uh, you know, basically uh, along Lydell uh, to, to, to screen uh, the homeowners for that parking lot. And I think that without that, I, I don't know that I would vote to, 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 for this to go through. Alderman Doherty? Yeah, it just looked like a lot of parking. It's the entire length of the building. So that was be my input on that is, you know, that's maybe did angle parking to save more footage to have more buffer area or something. But just to slam it in the way it is, it makes the entire building surrounded by parking, which I guess I'm maybe not sure of the number of people they're trying to park, but there used to be 7,000 people work there. So I got a feeling you could figure out some way without jamming more parking on the east side. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Vukovic. Um, I, uh, I think this is a, a, a vote to rezone, not to talk about. I mean, because some of this is, what, but don't do that. Let me finish what I'm saying. What I'm saying, it, it's a, 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 a vote to rezone when it comes back with the plans that are actually going to be done, that is when to nitpick or see if we can move it around. Because if we don't rezone it, then they have no reason to try to move it around. So I guess I, I would say, don't put the horse before the cart. It's a, it's a rezoning so they can bring back plans. Thank you. Anyone else in the council? Alderman Schmelzling, go ahead. Um, recognizing this is a vote to rezone, but we do have these plans ahead of us. So I'm, I'm sure staff has already highlighted the fact that there looks to be, you know, a little pass through garage door driveway, which potentially could have headlights going right onto Lydell. We might want to prevent that. So anything like that that comes out of the final plan, let's make sure we're cognizant of the impacts to our neighbors, even if they are in Whitefish Bay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we'll go ahead and call for the vote then. All those in favor of approving the rezoning of 5055 North Lydell from a B1A1 to a PD, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The rezoning is approved. All right, the next item is the consent agenda, which has four things on it. Um, a meeting minutes from our last meeting, accounts payable, a denial of a claim from First Citizens Bank, and a proclamation supporting Wisconsin School Board Week. Can I get a motion to adopt the consent agenda, please? Okay. Moved by Alderman Gellhard, second by Alderwoman Shaw. Um, any discussion? We'll consider the consent agenda adopted without objection. Hearing no objection, we'll move on. Unfinished business. We have a resolution approving the 2023 North Shore Library Agreement uh, is before okay. us. Uh, we had this at our last meeting. We requested the red lines. The red lines came back and were basically a waste of time. Um, <laughs> test, test. Mine works. Working. Testing. Right. Test. Test. Oh, there we Bueller. go. Back. Okay. Um, 
So we have before us now the 2023 North Shore Library Agreement uh, with a couple of minor changes, a um, couple of commas, and I think an insertion of the word the, but apparently River Hills attorney thought that was important enough to make all the other communities um, approve it again. So um, can we get a motion to adopt the resolution that would approve the 2023 North Shore Library Agreement, please? So moved. Thank you. Move by Alderman Shaw. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Bailey. Any discussion? Alderman Gelhard. So the did you find a missing comma? I, well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the <laughs> another lawyer up here. So. <laughs> it, now here's the sentence that I had a problem with it. So it says the board shall the, the the original text said the board shall be given the facility uh, for use by residents and and others, and it's been changed to the board um, shall operate the facility for use by residents and others. And it, to me, it, that there was a question of well. Who owns the facility? I thought it, we were, you know, the North Shore Library was going to, they were going to have this, the, the board was going to own this. And that, that kind of question, puts it in question as to who uh, the owner is. I, I believe the space is being deeded over to the library upon completion. That, I mean, that is in the agreement with Bayside and the developer. The developer is deeding the space over to the library. This is a River Hills change. This is not a Bayside change. I don't know why the River Hills attorney felt a need to um, to change that particular language, but Bayside did already approve the revised library agreement with that change in it, even though their agreement does indicate that the library space upon completion will be deeded over to the North Shore Library. Yeah. Yes, Alderman Shaw? Even though I was the one that requested the copy of the red line for, I would like to thank city administrator Warwick for doing so because it's nice to know that we didn't really need to worry, but it's good to see YA just in case. No problem. I completely agree. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, questions? Okay. We do have a motion. All those in favor of approving the resolution that would approve the 2023 North Shore Library Agreement, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. I will sign the North Shore Library Agreement. Uh, the next thing then is appointments to the Library Board and the Citywide and Richard E. Maslowski Community Park Activities Committee. We laid both of these over from our last meeting uh, because we couldn't appoint somebody to a Library Board when we hadn't adopted the agreement. And the Citywide Committees, I had been traveling, got back a few hours before the meeting and did not have time to get the memo to Carl. So I did now. So can I get a motion to approve the appointments to the Library Board and to the Citywide and Richard E. Maslowski Community Park Activities Committee? Moved. Moved by Alderman Second. Schnalzling. Second by Alderman Doherty. Any discussion? Alderman Shaw? I understand we're appointing just the positions that you have outlined according to the ordinance, but... I will say that there, I, I'm looking for some changes to the ordinance uh, because I was uh, working under the premise of uh, how many people get appointed. And with that, I don't want to cut the legs off of the people who have been willing to do the work who are not on this list to be appointed because it's really unfair to those individuals who have given their uh, many hours and years of being able to serve on those committees. So, And if you're worried about a quorum, we can always adjust that uh, uh, to make sure that the committee itself can at least do their business without having every single person there. But again, I'm, I will be looking for, towards having those individuals who have been serving for over 20 years to at least be on the committee and not be cut at the legs. Thank you. In addition to the people that you uh, sent me, I have uh, probably four or five other people that asked to be on the committee. So, I mean, if we looked to expand, we'd probably be expanding it to like 15 people. Um, in order to reappoint all those folks. And I haven't even asked Alderman Schmelzing if there's folks on the 4th of July committee that would probably like to serve on this. Um, the idea here was just basically to create sort of an umbrella committee. There will be lots of opportunities for people to be involved with the specific activities that they enjoy. Um, just maybe not on the position of saying, having the vote saying this is the calendar for the year, but being able to volunteer and be a part of all those activities is still very much an option. I do understand that, but again, a lot of people look at it at you know, the recognition of being able to say, I've been on this committee for X amount of time, and otherwise I'd be glad to uh, step down and let Schmelzling do it. <laughs> but again, I, I just know the people that I have talked to you about, even though I, I realize I didn't include city administrator Warwick, but with respect to that, I know those people have been involved with city functions, such as these type of events, for years. 
I understand. Any other comments or questions from members of the council? Okay, all those in favor of approving the appointments to the library board and the activities committee, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The next item, uh, moving into our onto our new business. Um, two weeks from tonight, the common council meeting, if we were to hold it, would be on Yom Kippur. And out of respect to the many residents of our city who are Jewish, and that is a holiday for them. 40% of our community is Jewish. We have five synagogues in the community. So uh, I asked Carl if we would have an item tonight to cancel our next meeting. But I would like to have um, the ability, if something should come up, that we would have an issue that we need to address rather quickly, or maybe two or three, that we could call for a meeting later that week. It would be a Zoom meeting if we had to call one, but that way we'd at least be able to have a council meeting, a second one in September if we needed one. So the motion we're asking for tonight is uh, to um, cancel the September 2025 um, Common Council meeting and allow the mayor and city administrator the ability to call a second meeting in September if, if necessary. So moved. Thank you. Move by Alderman Doherty, second by Alderman Schmelzling. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Thank you all... for being cognizant of that. So, yeah. Um, we do have, and I just got today, which I was going to mention later in my report, but um, Chabad of Glendale uh, has sent us once again the calendar for the upcoming Jewish year. Uh, so we make sure we can get all of those um, dates on our calendar so that we continue to make sure that city meetings don't conflict with major holidays. Um, we certainly don't hold meetings on Christmas or New Year's or Thanksgiving or Easter. So we want to make sure that we're respectful also of other major holidays. So all those in favor of canceling the September 25th meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, next is approval of the fall newsletter. I'll turn it over to the city administrator. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kennedy. So staff has put together the fall newsletter for the city council's review and approval. Um, it's in front of you for any questions or concerns that you may have. Anybody have any questions, corrections? I enjoyed. <laughs> Steve, did you find a missing comma? <laughs> <laughs> you oh, I, the one. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that, um, you know, you could color the specific numbers of the alders that are being up for election but uh no that was just a a joke in my mind all right <laughs> thank you alderman vukovic microphone i saw this it's it's not a big deal but i'm an alder woman not an alderman i don't i go by alder woman so i don't either you say alder or some other council whatever i just i which I don't care what anybody else says. That's for me in my district. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We will definitely make that change. As you saw, we we made a little table there for um, all the alders just to make it easier to see your uh, your names and email addresses and phone numbers. No more comment on that. All right. Any other comments? Uh, Alderman Bailey? Oh, you thought you were raising your hand. Okay. All right, can I get a motion then to approve the fall newsletter and direct staff to print it and mail it? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Shaw. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Schmelzling. All those in favor of uh, approving the fall newsletter, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. I like the theme colors. <laughs> there are so many leaves, I almost wanted to go get the rake, but okay. <laughs> Not ready for sure that they get the one put into the curb. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, next item 6C authorization to execute the 2023 2024 school resource officer shared services agreement. Is that Carl or Chief who's speaking to this one? Uh, I, we, either one of us can speak. Uh, essentially, okay. this is approved every year um, by both the city of Glendale and Nicolay High School to reimburse the city for two thirds of the cost of the school resource officer who is um, positioned or placed at Nicolay High School. Uh, the budgeted expense for the school resource officer is approximately $136,000 with approximately $90,000 coming back to the city in terms of payment for that school resource officer. All right, do you want anything to that chief? No, as long as uh, once I get your signature, if it's approved, then I will forward it to Greg Cabara and then they will do their signatures. We'll bring it back to the city. Thank you. 
I get a motion then to approve the uh, agreement for the SRO with the Nicolay School District. Thank you, move Alderman Shaw. Is there a second? Second. Second of Alderman Gelhard. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. Uh, motion carries on a five to one vote. Next item 6D, authorization to execute design engineering services agreement with Clark Dietz, not to exceed $658,000. Thank you, Mayor Kennedy. So in um, in anticipation of the the, um, the proceedings that happened before regarding the uh, reconstruction of Silver Spring Drive, uh, staff was directed to negotiate an agreement for design engineering for this project. Uh, the cost proposed is $658,000. Uh, the share for the city of Milwaukee would reduce that cost by $197,000 attached is the agreement with all the terms and the work required for Clark Dietz um, to perform for this, including a number of public hearings and to attend as many um, common council meetings as required. So Mr. Uh, Mustafa Mir will be attending every meeting and just uh, sitting in the audience. Do you have any further comments, uh, Mr. Mir? Of course I do. Um, yes, as as you know, we um, we've been working with administration and uh, Department of Public Works, um, and uh, worked with WISDOT to develop a detailed um, scope of services. Um, this is kind of a novel thing for um, Glendale. We are uh, essentially in the DOT world, and um, however, we're very committed to make this project in the flavor, character, and brand of our city. So here we go. Thank you. Any comments or questions from members of the council? If not, I'll entertain a motion then to um, authorize the city administrator to execute the agreement with Clark Dietz. Move, Move Baldwin with Shaw is our second. Second by Alderman Vukovic. Any discussion? Alderman Doherty? So if we didn't get Milwaukee's money, we're not approving the 658. Is that how that works? Uh, well, the 658 is there um, for approval. Um, so uh, this project, um, you know, move, you know, the, the movement of this project definitely depends on the city of Milwaukee, who has tentatively agreed on the 30% cost share for everything. Uh, the next step for us will be to negotiate a memorandum of understanding after this is executed with Milwaukee to bring that back uh, to the city of Glendale for approval for their cost share of the 197 for this agreement, plus the remaining 30% share for the rest of the project. Get that. I'm just asking the chicken and the egg question. Yeah, if that, it that, doesn't happen to wheel the 658, yes, it does. Yep. Yes, we do. Owe. Yes, we do. Six hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars. Um, now, this is for costs um, accumulated, so we would and have the ability to terminate this contract if Milwaukee does not participate. Uh, the city did receive four million dollars in a federal earmark for this project, which we do have now tallied at about twelve million dollars. Alderman, if I can just frame it for you um as as we talked about the last time the total cost of this endeavor is in the 11 sort of million dollars um and um, we will be pursuing various dot grants and uh, the city of milwaukee owns 30 percent of the roadway surface um and so on a technical level and an engineering public works level they're well aware of this and our next step with uh, um, our on, on our end, uh, staff and public works, um, we are um, essentially bringing them in to the money fold, um, memorandum of an understanding and establish a framework for cost share. And so the idea would be to take the total budget um, and then um, fund it with outside monies, so congressional, DOT, et cetera. And then what remains um, uncovered is what we would refer to as local share. And that local share, we would split 70-30. So that's what um, sort of the tool. Yeah, I, I think I understood that from our last meeting. I okay. just wanted to make sure we didn't get into, you know, we'd have to relook at this if City of Milwaukee box on their end of it. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. And I think we can agree. I'm not saying this. they would. I'm just saying if they did. Yeah. And if they definitely do that, we'll have another conversation back here with this, this the city's intent to move forward with this. The idea, it gives us a reason to continue to fund us moving forward those things with clean. also other funding. Right. So, I mean, if we're looking at an 11 million dollar cost and we only have, say, four million plus whatever we put together ourselves. Right then it's a completely different project. Then we relook at everything, including my contract, because clearly we're not building that. That's all I'm asking. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So is there an out if this isn't the $12 million project that's done in conjunction with the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee County Transit? Uh, that, would yes. we still be on the hook for $658,000? Or if we had to scale it back, would, <laughs> would the contract with Clark Dietz also be scaled back? Well, no, because uh, clearly... If the funding isn't there, we're not building six hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars worth of engineering. So we will modify together and scale back all of the costs, engineering, construction, roadway. We decide in this room and with our residents as to what we want to afford. And um, we essentially um, readjust all of the costs including mine okay alderman gallagher and just before i came down to the the meeting i uh, saw a headline that there was a hit and run pedestrian death at 64th and silver spring and i understand that's west of where we're working but i think that making silver spring a safer place is a good idea thank you and um, I'm just going to ask one question here. I know we were planning to do public listening sessions around Silver Spring. Is that going to be yet this year or? We can start as soon as we're able to. Okay. I I would recommend. I mean. Uh... I, I think reaching out, particularly to the neighbors that live in the neighborhoods from, from 27th Street to the freeway along Silver Spring, reaching out to those folks and then inviting them to be a part of a larger conference. I mean, it could be open to the entire city, but those neighbors particularly, um, maybe November or so before we get to the end of the year, so we get their input. As soon as we can, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I mean, yeah, and that, that side idea. of it is going to take a lot of time and sort of attention because we don't want to sort of uh, limit people's ability to input. Right. Yeah, the next step is definitely to get more, the city of Milwaukee's um, contribution on the books. Um, pursue grants and then um, open up the public hearing process because there's no point to designing this before you get public input. Okay. All right. Any other? Any, did we do a motion on this already? Okay. All right. Call for a vote then. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. The agreement with Clark Deeds has been approved. Next is a resolution authorizing the submittal of a state grant application and appropriation for City of Glendale and MMSD um, for municipal flood control grant projects. Mr. Warwick. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kennedy. I will turn this over to Mr. Fellows. He is the local expert on this. So I'll just okay. go directly to the source. Thank you. Well, uh, this particular item is something that you've seen um, before. Uh, it's a biannual grant that is sponsored by the Wisconsin DNR. It's open up to all communities within uh, Wisconsin that have properties that are in the floodway. Um, just as a point of clarification, I'd like to make sure that you understand there's three kind of zones. There's the floodway, which is adjacent to the to the river that actually has um, fast moving water sort of by definition when the, when the river rises. Then there's the 100 year flood plain that's followed by that. And then there's a 500 year flood plain following that. And each of those areas have um, different um, requirements and, and criteria and something like, and things like that. So we're specifically this grant targets structures that are in the flood way, not the floodplain, but in the flood way. Um, if you were to look at a FEMA map um, online, that is the area that has sort of a red cross, reddish burgundy crosshatch um, area. So this particular grant, the way um, the state has it structured is we actually do have to have the municipality authorized staff to actually apply for the grant. Um, and so we have to have a resolution from you, which is attached to your packet. That is the standard DNR resolution with you know um, our language um, and headers and things added in. And then uh, what happens following 
that is we send out letters uh, to those property owners that are in the flood or have structures within the floodway. Um, there's approximately 51, 52 structures, uh, uh, properties that currently have some sort of structure um, in the floodway. So we would be um, focusing on those uh, properties. In the past, we have just focused on properties on Sunny Point, um, but we, um, uh, over the last cycle, there was a little less interest. And so working with our partners at the MMSD, uh, decision was that we maybe could expand that to those other um, properties. Um, so that expands. So Sunny Point will still get, if, if they're in the flood way, they'll still get a letter, but they'll, we'll be expanding that to a, a few more people um, along the river corridor. Um, if someone with that packet, they're gonna get a information sheet, they could um, choose to say they're interested um, or they can just not respond. If we have anyone who is interested, then we go through a process where um, we would um, collect that information from that they're in, in, interested. We'd actually have to do a, um, a series of other documentations and um, uh, prepare a property map as well as um, a property appraisal. If the property is estimated to be around 350 or more, we'd actually have to have two appraisals. All of that has to be done by March 15th um, in order to submit to the state. Um, there is no commitment when you do when you go through this from the property owner, but they're showing their interest. Um, and if the state were to award us the grant, then those uh, monies would be available to uh, for the acquisition of that particular property. Um, the unique thing here in Glendale, unlike in probably some other communities, is that we do have a partnership with the MMSD where their I, our ICMA agreement with them allows uh, those funds to be used as the, the municipality sh um, share of the acquisition. So in other communities, they may actually have to use their general fund or budget for their general fund um, for the other half of these um, purchases. But um, we have the uh, partnership with the MMSD. So essentially it's uh, some staff time, but otherwise limited uh, funds from that perspective. If no one shows any interest, then we would not be applying for the grant. If we have a handful or even just one person, we would you know, go through those steps. Um, from that perspective. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. All right, we'll open up first to questions. All right, can I get a motion then to approve the resolution? Um, did you reach out to your older person or the mayor ahead of the meeting requesting to speak? Okay. Talked about her kitchen and uh, what she would need to do when we met with her husband to talk about the. Okay. So all of all of our city agendas indicate that if you want to speak to an agenda item that the appropriate that you need to reach out to the mayor or the city council and. It, okay, I will make the exception this one time, Mr. Fellows. Okay. Can you please step up to the microphone then and state your name and address, please? So you need to speak into the microphone. You need to speak into the microphone. It it doesn't pick you up unless you're right in front of it. I'm sorry, it's a rather picky microphone. Trisha Matusiak, 1124 West Riverview. Because you say when you're on this particular issue that this is strictly a voluntary program. I don't know if I'm going to be um, contacted by you or not. I do live on the river. It says neither the state nor the city of Glendale will use its eminent domain authority to acquire any property. In fact, it says you can't, uh, it's prohibited where federal and state funds are employed. My question is, what are the written legal assurances that no eminent domain power will be used by any entity where use of private or city funds are used for the purchase of Milwaukee River adjacent property as opposed to federal or state funds? And what is the actual plan for the property acquired? Since the basic flood elevation level is now four to 10 feet lower subsequent to the removal of the Esterbrook Dam, what is the plan and when and how will it be communicated to Glendale residents 
as required by WISDAT 6610014A. I can speak. The first part of your question is uh, the city of Glendale is not allowed to eminent domain because there are federal funds involved here. The way this, pro this process works is if you receive one of the letters, you would indicate that you are willing to sell your home at full market value. And the way that the home is purchased is using money that comes from the federal government, from the state DNR, and then from the city of Glendale. But we don't use the city's funds. We get to use MMSD's money instead of the city's. So that's how the property is purchased. That, but it's entirely voluntary and it cannot be done through eminent domain. The second part of the question is what happens to the property then? Yes. You've seen several of them on Sunny Point where this project has already happened. They sell the home. Then the city works with uh, to put out a bid for demolition of the property, and then it becomes green space. So there, there's no structure there. That is what's happened with, I think, 11 or 12 homes along Sunny Point Lane um, that were, have participated voluntarily in this project. No one has been eminent domain. Well, what about the contract where the contract is between Glendale, MMSD, and the property owner? And it says that MMSD will own property. 10 years later, it then reverts back to Glendale and Glendale owns the property. What, what is the plan? You're, you're telling me when the river is so much lower, there's never, ever going to be a flood. I, I believe you've asked this question in a, a public hearing we had a couple of no, months ago. I never asked this question. Well, you asked something similar about what's our plan? What what you like yeah, as if we're your plan. as if we have some conspiracy here that we're secretly trying to decide what we're going to do ten years down the road with the land. You're right, I'm wondering that, what you're going to. If do. you look at the master plan for the city, the properties along that river are residential properties. And the ones that would participate in this program, they become part of what is called conservation, which means they get rezoned to parkland. And there is no, there, I mean, the ones that have been along the river have all been rezoned. That's what you were here for the rezoning of all this. No, that makes no sense. Or that means they're not going to be developed because they are at this point conservation land. Yeah. So. And what about the, um, the city civic center that you want, and what about? Um, so, ma'am, see, you you said this at the at the public yeah. hearing on the rezoning of those properties. Somehow, there is no I'm... civic center. This is the civic center. We just built it. This isn't going anywhere. This is the property. I don't know where you're getting these ideas well, from, but I they are not a part from... of any of the city's public documents. You've seen all the public documents. Everything is entirely transparent. Okay, the planning commission ten years ago, there were letters between Dick Meslowski, MMSD and uh, Glendale when there, and he said he would agree to let MMSD acquire the 10 properties on Sunny Point, but he would, he refused to let them acquire the 384 other properties in Glendale. Okay, and that was 10 years ago. And now 10 years later, right after the dam is out and that, that's when you acquire the 10 properties on, on Sunny Point. And now you're expanding it to try to oh, go, what, 50 by 50 to get the other 384? I mean, what is the plan? There was some, a plan 10 years ago, and now it is being revived. Oh, you know, I, I appreciate your comment, but the, there there is no, I don't know what this plan is you're talking about because it doesn't exist. I, you know what? There may have yes. been a conversation that, that Mr. Mazlowski These had 10 years ago. That are but, attached to the plan of the... Southeastern Wisconsin not, Planning Commission. Right, but that wasn't adopted by the city of Glendale. It's not a part of our official documents. Now I've allowed you to speak. Uh -huh. Do you do you have any other any other comments or questions about no, this? I, I wish you would be up front and tell us what's going on. You know, I, I wish there were some conspiracy I could share with you, but there's not. You you like I said, you came to past meetings and alleged a bunch of conspiracies. There no, there I is no documentation of I any of this sort. I don't. I ask questions. Right, and I answered your questions tonight. If you if you get one of the letters and you want to voluntarily participate in the property, the city would purchase your your property at full market value. The house would be demolished and it would become green space and would be rezoned as conservation land. Because but if you're not in the floodway, then you won't get one of those letters. And but it's entirely a voluntary process. We've acquired about a dozen homes and done this with all of them, and it's exactly. But you have changed the law in 2021 to to put more people in the floodway that have always been in the flood fringe, and this we this is... we have not we have not adopted a new floodplain map. I think the last one was in the 1990s. 
Uh, we have one that it, engineers are currently working on, but it's still not ready. I mean, it's not done yet. So uh, there isn't a new flood map and we haven't adopted anything. Adopt it. Uh, there, there will be public of the hearings. Are going to yeah. be in the floodway or the flood fringe. Okay. Because the river is so much lower. It is four feet lower at Esterbrook. It is five feet lower where I am and 10 feet lower at Cedarburg. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments from members of the council? All right. We do have before us then. Um, an authorization to uh, for staff to submit the state grant application and appropriation for uh, the municipal flood control grant project. Can I get a motion to approve, please? So moved. Move Alderman Gelhardt. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Bailey. Any further discussion from members of the council? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving uh, the authorization of staff to submit for the state grant, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And the last item of new business, item 6F, is an ordinance amending section 10.1.26, Schedule J, parking prohibited, to prohibit parking on the west side of Jean Nicolet from Glendale's northern border. Uh, there should not be an A in that on the agenda. Um, on, Green, on Green Tree to Daphne. So there's currently no parking from Daphne South. This would just be from Green Tree to Daphne, the area along Nicolet, particularly along uh, the area by the... Um, by the football stadium. I've received at least a dozen comments from folks in the last few days, um, all indicating that they support this. We do have one person who's asked to speak to it. Um, Alderman Gelhard forwarded that to me earlier today. Uh, so Joe Wilt had, had reached out to his alderman and asked to speak to this item. If you could state your name and address, please. Sure. It is Joe Wilt and I live on the corner of Acacia and Elm Tree in John's um, area. And uh, my wife and I, uh, like so many in our neighborhood, um, particularly be, being restricted now to traveling on Jean Nicolay North because of the construction going on for the I-43 project, um, have noticed that on um, any night of the week, particularly on Friday nights, uh, when football games are there, um, People are parking and not just alongside Jean Nicolet, but actually parking on the sidewalk um, all the way down from um, Green Tree all the way down to at least Daphne. And we think it's it's unsafe. Um, we think if you want to go to a football game, you should pay your admission and find parking in the parking lot. We've been told there's ample parking available in spite of the expansion of Nicolet. And um, just makes sense to us that given a two lane, um, very busy road that somebody could get hurt if um, if we continue to allow people to park there. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right. Any members of the council with any questions? Yeah, Alderman Schmelzling. I was just curious why this is only on the west side. The east side is still. It's already no park. Thank you. East side is adjacent to the freeway right. and there's no parking yeah. allowed. Yep. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All right, Alderman Miguel Hart, go ahead. Just to uh, yeah, reinforce what uh, Mr. Wilt said, uh, uh, when there's parking on the west side of Jean Nicolet, especially during these football games, uh, it, it basically forces uh, uh, motorists traveling south on Jean Nicolet to move into the northbound lanes. Uh, and then I, myself, a few weeks ago, was almost in a, in a head-on collision. Uh, there was a neighbor of mine that did have a, 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 a it was involved in a head-on collision at that very uh, area uh, because of uh, uh, cars in the uh, on the west side of Jean Nicolet, and so uh, it's a safety thing, and um, uh, that's why I'm proposing it. Okay. Well, since you proposed it, would you like to move it? Yes. So moved. Thank second. you. Moved by Gelhard, seconded by Doherty. Any further discussion? Real quick. Yep. Go ahead. Something like they have at the airport where you can pull over and like watch the planes fly and like watch the big new fancy screen. A cell phone waiting a lot? Yes. <laughs> kind of like a, but but no, like like by Howell where you can just watch the planes fly or you can just watch the game and the big screen. So anyways, I'm just sarcastically saying, okay. but I, I think that's what's happening here and that's not what a road's intended for. No, it's not what the road's intended for. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the ordinance, please say aye. 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 Oh no. Motion carries. Will those signs be able to be up before Friday night's game? 
Uh, so uh, I'll turn to Madam Clerk on that. When will this be published? So then it will go into effect on what date? It won't be published until next week, just based on the deadlines to get into the paper. Okay. So. I know, is there a home game this week or an away game? I believe it's a home game. Okay. Can we, is there a way to put temporary no parking signs up there? Or do we, does we that require a move? Signs a up, the... understanding the fact that tickets can't be written. So we can put up temporary no parking signs. So we can do that. Okay. Before Saturday, Friday's game. We I'll just can't write it. tickets. Got it. Okay. We can restrict parking on an emergency. I'll, I'll work with Charlie. And we'll get some signs put out. Okay. If he's Perfect. got some. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is commission committee board and staff reports. Um, I'll start with the clerk. Yep. Thank you. Chief. Nothing to report. All right. City administrator. Same here. The attorney. All right. Number one. Number two. Nothing to report tonight. Number three. Nothing this evening. Number four. Evening. Number five. Actually, something from the Legacy Fourth of July Committee. <laughs> so, um, in we we were trying to get Eddie Butts Band for next year, and they were already booked up. So, um, so we've lined them up, I guess, for um, two, years? two years out. Yes. So, um, so mark your calendars to go see Eddie Butts at the Fourth of July, which. Um, 25. 2025 <laughs> so uh so um alderwoman shaw if you'd like to thank me for um working that out or actually our staff member our new uh uh deputy city administrator um she was able to work that out with them because we were working with them for this year thank you for doing that and i look forward to you chairing that event for that time <laughs> That's number five number six no thank you Nothing. Okay. I'll just say the ICC met today um, was a, probably an hour and 20 minute meeting. Wasn't a terribly long meeting. Uh, nothing major to report from it. Um, fire department meets here tomorrow morning. We're meeting in person. I think everybody wants to see the progress of what's going on about 300 feet that way. So um, the, <laughs> the fire department will be here tomorrow morning. Anybody wants to attend the fire department board meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, I would just say um, it, it was alluded to. Uh, congratulations to Jessica Balwig, who is our new deputy city administrator. I know we all received the announcement from Carl about it, but I thought I should publicly recognize her in the meeting. Um, we are noticed for a closed session. As you know, we have a case pending uh, Glendale versus We Energies at the Public Service Commission. And we have uh, before us later in the in the meeting when we come reconvene in open session, there will be um, there will be action taken uh, toward the approval of a retainer agreement with Godfrey and Khan to serve as legal counsel for the city of Glendale. But for the moment, we need to go into closed session to discuss that retainer. So can I get a motion to reconvene in closed session? I moved. Uh, thank second. you. Moved by Shaw, seconded by Doherty. All those in favor of convening in closed session, say aye. 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 Close no. We are in closed session. When we anybody who's attending and wants to wait around, we will reopen the doors in a little bit and reconvene an open session for approval of the retainer. <laughs> Megan, did you stop the recording? Okay. Yeah, quick. All right, it is 7.57 p.m. and a uh, motion was made by Alderwoman Shaw, seconded by Alderwoman Vukovic to reconvene an open session. The vote was unanimous. So at 7.58 p.m., we are now reconvened in open session and continuing with our regular order of business. In the closed session, we had an opportunity to discuss with outside counsel uh, a retainer agreement that we would employ uh, Godfrey and Khan as legal counsel for the city of Glendale to assist us in our case against We Energies at the Public Service Commission. Um, so before us is a recommendation from the city administrator that we approve that retainer uh, with an amount not to exceed $50,000. Can I get a motion to that effect, please? Second. Moved by Alderman Shaw, seconded by Alderman Bailey. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the retainer, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The retainer has been approved. 
And finally, uh, motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. By Bailey, seconded by Schmelzling. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. <laughs> I'm going to call now and get no cell. Oh, did you want to talk? Fine. Um, in, uh, in, my pre in a previous player, I had this uh, labor attorney, David Lefkoe. And now the um, right now. Right. 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 Oh, sure. I don't think I can tie it on the trail, but I do have a Well, thank you. No, well, no, I understand it. I'm, I'm really glad. I mean, you know, you're. John, could you? Zoom I do it. I mean, you, you, it's on your thing.